The Henry family had, on the one hand, a head constable of the RIC, but on the other, well, let's see what that was about. So, Kevin, you know why we went to the courthouse in Sligo? Um, your great-grandfather made an appearance there, and it's a very interesting story. Um, he was convicted of abducting a woman. Hmm. Marriages were often mere financial arrangements, and families could forbid enthusiastic lovers from marrying someone from a different social class or religion, or even from a different county or parish. Abduction weddings were often carried out secretly where they could be married by a sympathetic priest or minister. Sometimes the couple would be pursued by their families or the authorities, and there are accounts of dramatic chases and escapes. However, abduction weddings were not always consensual, and in some cases, young women were taken against their will and forced into marriage. But it seems um, in Sligo, very often the woman was in on it, or it was kind of an accepted way. And there's a quote in the courthouse which says, it was the Sligo way of wooing. And that was used as a defense actually for your great grandfather. Um, but the judge didn't want to punish him too much. Um, but he also wants to make an example because he said it wasn't acceptable anymore really as a way of doing things. So your great grandfather and his friend John Harrigy were both done for abducting a woman and they got three months hard labour. Well, I was aware from the work in compiling the ancestry in working with you that uh, this incident had happened, but uh, I wasn't quite aware of all the gory details that you've outlined. But it seems to me that the judge got it right. Uh, it was almost consensual and seemed to fall apart over the lack of a dowry, it would seem to me, whether that interpretation is right or not. But at the end of the day, the judge did have to make an example. So three months seems pretty reasonable to me, albeit hard labour. But uh, interesting. Yeah, you know, there was some evidence that, um, now granted it was given by your great grandfather's father, but there's some evidence that um, there might have been some bit of consensuality because what he said was um, that when the, his, uh, when the father came over to negotiate with the girl's father, that they were outside holding hands and drinking tea. So it didn't sound like um, what we would think an abduction would entail. It didn't sound as terrifying or as, as terrorizing as that. Um, and the other thing I think that's worth noting is the way uh, court writers or journalists wrote back then, there's quite specific um, commentaries and judgments. So they did say that the lady in question was, uh, she had a prepossessing countenance which means she was very good looking and the other thing they said was that the both um, your great grandfather John Riley and John Harrigan were respectable looking countrymen. So this is where it all happened uh, Rose uh, where my great great father was convicted of abduction and got sentenced to three months hard labour. Uh, that was in 1874 and looking at the magnificent facade, I'd say it has changed little or nothing in that time. So I just can't imagine the terror of being held in there, uh, never mind the subsequent hard labour. But uh, that's life. Uh, you commit the crime, you do the time. Our John was not put off court or court cases, it would seem. Three years later, in 1877, he sued six people for non-payment for the services of his bull. 